Welcome back. Citizens in Kenya risk a $10,000 fine or a jail term of five years for using impolite, disrespectful or inciting language on social media. That's according to a new proposal to regulate online content during the election season. The proposal is part of rules being co-authored by two government bodies, the Communications Authority and the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. It says in part, all social media content shall be written using civilized language that avoid tone and words that constitute hate speech, ethnic contempt and incitement to violence. Content posted on Facebook, Twitter and WhatsApp will be monitored and those found to be untruthful or inflammatory will be flagged and their authors fined. Kenya's general election will be held on August the 8th. Meanwhile, the body that campaigns against drug abuse in Kenya has proposed that all bars should be closed a week ahead of the election. The CEO of the National Authority for the Campaign Against Alcohol and Drug Abuse, Victor Okuma, is quoted as saying that the move would ensure people do not vote under the influence of alcohol or drugs. This announcement comes just after President Uhuru Kenyatta announced that the local beer company will be making a huge investment in the western city of Kisumu. The South Hauteng High Court in South Africa has declared that public schools should not favor any one religion over others. The Organization for Religious Education and Democracy brought the case against six schools with a Christian ethos. In its application, the organization argued that the school's decision to stop scientific teaching of the theory of evolution is an abuse of the people's rights to knowledge. While handing down the landmark ruling, Judge Willem van der Linde said the court is concerned by single faith branding in schools. The ruling means public schools have an obligation to review policies around religion. Zimbabwean human rights campaigner and uh, this flag protest leader, Ivan Wariri, who arrived at the magistrate's courts with a Bible in hand, has been granted bail. After a 15-minute session, the court ruled without opposition from the state prosecutor to give him bail to the tune of $200. He is being charged with inciting public violence after allegedly inciting students to protest. Mr. Wawariri was arrested earlier this week after addressing a group of medical students protesting fee increases at the University of Zimbabwe. The demonstration turned violent, but Pastor Mawariri says that he was simply praying with the students. He will return to court on July the 19th. Red Crescent volunteers have recovered the bodies of 24 migrants washed up in an eastern suburb of the Libyan capital Tripoli as large-scale rescues were made in the Mediterranean. Residents in Tajura district said the bodies had begun washing up at the end of last week. Several had been partially devoured by stray dogs. The toll was expected to increase as the flimsy boats used to carry migrants as far as international waters normally carry more than 100 people. About 5,000 migrants were picked up off the Libyan coast by emergency services, at least Navy and aid groups and private boats on Monday, and rescues were still continuing up until Tuesday. Zanga Sanga is a protected reserve in the southwestern region of the Central African Republic, which is home to various species of wild animals, including more than 3,000 forest elephants. It was once a major tourist attraction, but has been left idle and vulnerable to the ongoing conflict in the country. At the Zanga Sanga Park, elephants drink water and play in the mud. It is not an unusual sight in these parts of the Central African Republic, even as the country has been embroiled in conflict for the past four years. The park is located in Bayanga, a town over 500 kilometers southwest of the central Bangi. It's a protected reserve and home to 3,400 forest elephants, smaller than their cousins on the African savanna, as well as gorillas, chimpanzees and other wildlife and plant species. Run by the government and with financial and technical support of the World Wildlife Federation, WWF, 
This UNESCO World Heritage Site was once teeming with tourists. One of the park's main attractions was the Primate Habituation Program, attracting over 500 tourists a year. In order to see the elephants, we group all the tourists together at the welcoming section and then we give them information and brief them on what they can or cannot do while hiking. We also brief them on the activities we will be doing and what to expect when we are in the forest. Dolly Lodge, the park's main accommodation facility, now lies idle struggling to attract visitors. Central African Republic has been in turmoil since rebels charged the capital and ousted President Francois Bozizi in 2013. At the start of the violence, Zanga Sanga area was looted three times in one month, which made the World Wildlife Federation pull out its staff. We, ha we are very safe here. Yeah? Unfortunately, after the war and even before the war, there was a lot of um, security warnings, but the trouble has never really affected the southern part of the country, um, but it affected tourists badly. We, tourism was very badly affected. Um, and we went through a very bad phase of no tourists, only journalists who came here to see the wonderful sort of place that we are. Um, but now we are working very hard at marketing and it is safe. The, there is no reason to believe that, that we get trouble here. Many of Bayanga's residents depend on tourism, selling supplies and artifacts to visitors, working in the park and its lodges. The town also has coffee plantations and a logging industry. A recent spike in violence in the country, where fighting between militia groups has already killed about 300 people, and displaced nearly 100,000 others in the last month, meaning tourists may not be back in time soon. State governments in Nigeria have been compelled to make public the details of how they spent the more than 380 billion naira London Paris Club loan refunds disbursed to them recently by the federal government. And that's because the federal high court in Lagos has granted the request by the Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SEREP, to mandate the state governments to publish the details for proper accountability. SEREP is asking the Attorney General to initiate legal action against states that allegedly diverted and mismanaged the funds. The presiding judge, Justice Muslim Hassan, says accounting for the London Paris Club refund is necessary at a time the country is trying to fight corruption to the barest. That's Network Africa. Thank you for watching. I'm Jeff Rogers.